A lot of people tend to get stuck in the wrong mindset when they sit down to build their world. And it's really a shame because world building is one of the major parts of a fantasy story that sets them apart from other genres. And it's honestly the joy of getting to play God. But the problem is a lot of people have this particular idea in their head about how fantasy is supposed to be. Some associated with D&D, others with Tolkien or Narnia or whatever. But the truth is there's no baseline, no box that you have to restrict yourself to. People forget that literally anything is subject to change when you're building your world. But I need you to listen to this because you cannot let that stand on its own. Think of world building as a web. Every single part of your world should be connected to everything else. But obviously, taking this advice to the extreme is going to make it impossible to build your world. You could technically keep this web going and make it infinitely big. This is also part of the reason why the term world builder's disease has been coined. But a smart world builder restricts his world building to what makes sense for the story. For example, in the Storm Archive, Brandon Sanderson chooses to focus a lot on moral struggle and how that affects his characters and his world. And as a natural extension of this, he builds a lot of the culture, religion, and the magic system and uses these to affect the moral struggles of the characters. His world building fits the tone of what the story is trying to convey and serves as an extension to the story. In exchange, Sanderson spends less time on things like history because there are no obvious ways these can be used to affect the moral struggles of the characters. You could do the same with the Song of Ice and Fire, where a lot of the focus of the story lies on political intrigue. And then as an extension of that, world building details around the history between peoples and countries, the noble houses, as well as maps and borders become very relevant for understanding and providing depth to that political intrigue. And then you can follow that line to its logical conclusion. Part of the world building around noble houses include the lineages and relations between families, and an extension of that could be political marriages and wealth and so on, which all really help strengthen and quickly add layers to the political intrigue. And in that way, a lot of great world builders and storytellers center their world building around the focus of the story and match it with the tone and theme. But this is also where a great illusion is created, the famous iceberg. You see, when you've gone into great detail about a lot of other things in your world, just giving little tidbits into, for example, some seemingly obscure religion will make people imagine a great orthodoxy and history just as detailed and rich as everything else you created. And that's the great illusion. You make the reader imagine the world to be a great iceberg with so much unknown detail underneath. But in reality, there doesn't have to be anything there at all. You just have to make them believe it. Now that doesn't mean you can't create an actual iceberg. Authors like George R. R. Martin and Tolkien especially are notorious for having very detailed world building beyond what you just see in the story. Tolkien creating the entire elven language for one, but it is called world builder's disease for a reason. Following all the threads of the web can take an eternity. It took Tolkien 38 years to create Middle Earth many suggesting he started all the way back in 1916. Now all of what I've just said is important, but it's the entire way people think about world building that's usually the biggest mistake they make. They create this subconscious box of, oh, but isn't fantasy supposed to be kind of like Tolkien? Or, oh, isn't fantasy supposed to have elves? Or, oh, isn't it supposed to take place in a medieval world? Kind of a Dungeons and Dragons world. Almost all of fantasy has a similar level of technology. Almost all with sword fighting and mostly before gunpowder and guns. Although uh, there are, of course, many exceptions. One of the very famous ones ones, in fact, that turns the very fundamentals on its head is Terry Pratchett's Discworld. The story doesn't even take place on a planet. In fact, the world is a flat disc carried by enormous elephants standing on a giant turtle. Now this isn't to say you have to go that extreme, but just to showcase that you don't have to restrict yourself or follow a certain set of rules. You don't need to have hobbits or mages or elves. The world can be literally anything you want it to be. Now if you want it to be good <laughs> and believable, you need to follow the world building to its logical conclusions. Again, going back to this idea of the web. A critique often levied at D&D, for example, is that with a world where magic is as common as it is in D&D, just having the world be some run-of-the-mill medieval England makes no sense. There's no reason for traditional agriculture, transportation by horse, and even washing clothes by hand when you have magic it would change the very structure of that world. You can't just create something that would fundamentally alter how society works and then just completely ignore those implications. And that's important because that's what makes the world immersive. It fools people into thinking that this world could actually exist 
because everything makes sense. Of course, it's magic. It doesn't actually make sense, but as long as it's consistent with the rules that you've set up for the world, it will seem that way. Readers want to suspend disbelief. You just have to let them. But just remember that even with this advice, or if you think my advice is trash, even with the advice from the most phenomenal world builder in existence, if you're just gonna smash the entire thing into prologue exposition, you might as well just do what I did when I was very young and give up on life. But that was all for now. If you enjoyed, I would appreciate subscribe. And if you didn't, well, uh, check out this video about George R. R. Martin's world building, because uh, trust me, that video is much better.